Hello and welcome back to our same game mini game tutorial part 3 and let's just jump straight back into it. So the first thing we're going to write here is going to be a python block and this is just so that we can avoid any errors being thrown for this frame and inside here we're going to create our if statement and it's going to look like this if c column modulus and then brackets i count per row minus one does not equal zero so what does this line of code actually do well we're checking if c column can be divided cleanly by icons per row minus one and this is what this modulus operand is doing it's checking what remainders we actually have left after dividing this value with this value so if we're getting a remainder that means that we're not cleanly dividing these two values and if we're not cleanly dividing these two values that means that we want to create a new grid cell in the next iteration on the same row however if we can cleanly divide this then it means that we want to continue on the next row in the starting column so why does this work well i'm going to show you a few graphics to help me explain this a little bit better so if we imagine a grid with columns and rows each of the columns and rows are going to have their own index positioning values where the first column will have the index of zero and the first row will also have its index of zero the next column will have the index of one and the next two and so on that means that the very last column of a grid is going to have the index of nine so this is why this calculation works because if we're currently on the ninth column of our grid then our c column variable will also have the value of 9 and if we try to divide 9 by 9 we get a clean division which would indicate to us that we want to continue on the next row but if we are let's say on the 8th column of this current iteration we don't get a clean division and we want to make sure that we continue on the same row so now that I have explained this more visually, we're actually going to go ahead and add another condition to this if statement. And that is going to look like this. Or C column is equal to zero. And why are we doing this? You may have already guessed it, but if we happen to be on the very first column of a grid and we're trying to divide this index number of zero with nine, we're going to get a clean division. But this isn't going to help us because when we are on the first column we don't want to straight ahead afterwards jump to the next row but we want to stay on the same row and keep adding more cells until we reach the very end so with this whole if statement we're making sure that as long as c column cannot be cleanly divided by nine in this case or c column is zero and if this statement is true we're gonna want to make sure that we're jumping to the next column so we're going to say c column plus equals one and then we want to make sure that we create an else statement so we're going to go down here and say else and inside of here we're going to first set our c column value to zero so we say c column equals zero so that we are starting over on the first column and then to jump to the next row we'll say c row plus equals one so now we have actually implemented all of the necessary code that we need in order to show the grid inside of our same game screen however we still don't have a way to actually show the screen so let's go ahead and implement that right now so we're going to scroll down into our start label and we're going to swap this piece of text with jump setup icons so now our start label will jump to our setup icons label and our setup icons label is going to in turn be calling our screen same game so let's go ahead and implement that 
So we'll create a few empty lines and then we'll say call screen same game. So now we can actually go ahead and test our game to see what it looks like. But remember to also save your changes before we do. So let's head into our Rempy launcher and launch our project. And let's see what this looks like. Ah, so we can see a few different issues going on here. One of them is that our grid cells seems to be overlapping each other in a bit of a strange way. Another one is that our backing frame, the one that is 50% white color, is taking up the whole screen instead of just being a background for our grid. So let's go back into our code and see how we can fix this. So let's go ahead and scroll down into our same game screen and have a look to see what we can fix. Well, one thing is that our grid cell image is actually created to be twice as large as what it should be displayed on screen. So this would be the cause of the overlapping issue. So let's go ahead and create a zoom property for the image that will resize it to be half of its size. So we'll say zoom 0 0.5. And now let's go back into the game and see what it looks like. So now we actually have a nice looking grid that doesn't have any overlapping cells. So that's good, but now we also have the issue of the backing frame. So let's set this to a correct size as well. So why is it that the frame isn't able to automatically resize itself according to the children that it contains? Well this seems to be because our XP and YP positioning variables are using calculated values which are changing for each iteration of our loop. And this makes it a lot more difficult for the frame to determine just how much space the children is taking up on the screen. So this is the reason why it instead is taking up the whole screen instead of just encompassing the grid. So to fix this, we're going to create a few calculations again, which we are going to use to size the frame. So let's go up here to the start of our screen and create these variables. So the first one we can call frame x size and the value we want to put here is going to be the calculation and it is going to look like this. Brackets and then we'll say icons per row times icon size. And then after that we'll add a plus sign and then we'll say another set of brackets and icons per row times icon padding. So how does this calculation work? Well, we're taking our icons per row variable and we're multiplying that by icon size and this gives us the correct width of the grid. But then we're also adding each of the paddings between the grid cells, which also determines the actual width of our grid. So together, these two calculations gives us the full width of the grid. So now let's go ahead and create the next variable. And we're going to call this one frame y size. And the calculation for this one is going to look like this. Brackets. And then we're going to do another set of brackets inside of here. And then inside of that, we're going to say grid size divided by icons per row. And then inside of that set of brackets, but still inside of the outer brackets, we're going to say times icon size. Then outside of this, we're going to say plus another set of brackets and another set of brackets inside of those and we're going to say the same thing grid size divided by icons per row and then instead of multiplying that by icon size this time we're going to multiply that by icon padding so icon padding so now that we have created these two variables which contains our grid size 
we can go ahead and implement them into our frame. So let's go down here and we're going to say x size and we're going to use our frame x size variable here. And then let's do the same thing with y size and copy paste this frame y size variable. So now we can go ahead and test our game to see how this looks like. However, I'm just first going to correct this spelling error I made here so that it says icon padding and not icon spadding. So let's save and head over to our Rampire launcher and see what the game looks like. So now the frame actually has the correct size. However, we also have a slight padding on the top and on the left side of the frame, which makes it look a little bit uneven all around. So we can actually fix this in code to either remove this padding or add our own padding as we want it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that we like the top and left side padding that is added to our frame, but we'd like to even it out so that the right and bottom side also have the same amount of padding. The reason why it's not doing this automatically is like I said before, the frame doesn't really understand how much space its content is taking on the screen. But to fix this, we can simply make sure that our x size and y size variables are slightly larger to emulate a padding being added to the right and bottom side. So let's go ahead and implement that now. And I found by experimenting that a frame by default typically gets 4 pixels of padding on each of its sides. So in order to add this to our frame, we can simply go up here into our calculations and say plus 4. So let's do that. And now technically our frame should be the correct size and have an equal amount of padding applied all around it. So let's save and see if this is true. So I've gone ahead and launched the project and if we have a look we can see that the padding still doesn't look quite correct on the right and on the bottom side. And this is because I accidentally left out two pixels of padding in calculating the frame size. So when we added our four pixels of padding to the overall size of the frame, it didn't do much of a difference. So in order to fix this, let's go back into our code and add two pixels of padding to the size. So now that we are back into our code, let's have a look and see how we can make the frame size look more correct. So as I said before, I missed to add two pixels of padding to the frame size, which means that the frame wasn't actually the exact same size as the grid, and that is the reason why the four pixels of added padding doesn't really make much of a difference. So in order to fix this, we can either make the fours into sixes, or we can say plus icon padding plus four. And this way we have the two pixels added to the size as well as the four pixels of padding. So let's go ahead and do this for the y size variable as well. So we say icon padding plus four. So let's save and go back into our game and see what this looks like. So now we can see that the problem has been fixed and the padding looks correct on all sides of the frame. So the next thing we want to do is to make sure that we add the icons on top of this grid as well. But this is unfortunately going to have to be in the next video as we are running out of time again. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.